Welcome back. The Guardian Times this morning says upgrading of Nima Mamobi to begin by close of year. Uh, you saw that story yesterday, I'm sure. Uh, the works and housing minister. Six teenagers remanded in custody. Uh, murder of head teacher is Siakwa. Uh, that's the story. The BNFT, uh, the issue of dollarization, the Bank of Ghana must not fail us this time. The Bank of Ghana is clamping down on uh, getting items, uh, services uh, paid in dollar denominations or uh, uh, priced in dollar denominations. The Daily Graphic, 12 NI officials sacked the violated Ghana card registration rules and work on Eastern Corridor Road resumes in July. That's the president talking. Daily Guide says Opuni purchased $19.2 million and tested fertilizer. A witness in that case uh, speaking that the finder says petroleum hub tall is vital but needs private technical and financial partners senior horsey uh, talking those are some of the news i have this morning my guest to do the talking mp for ningo pram pram uh, honorable sam george is here good morning very good morning Jean. hope you're doing great by god's grace thanks for joining us and a member of the cpp madam uh, rodalina ayana is also here good morning too good morning. hope you're doing great too i'm fine i'm still waiting for the rep from the npp but certainly we'll start our conversation uh, this way uh, let's take a look at this nima story um we're told that uh, government will commence with the slum upgrading of nima and mamobi in ayawasu east municipality of Accra before the close of the year Minister of Works and Housing Mr. Atashian has spoken about this now according to him all the feasibility studies and the necessary documentations uh, would kickstart the project had been completed and would be submitted to cabinet for approval in the next cabinet meeting on Tuesday the whole engineering and what the developers want to do will be presented to the next cabinet for consideration and immediately to give us a green light we'll just begin or uh, bring in the developers and then we'll start uh, that's uh, the minister. What he said yesterday was that uh, uh, about 1,039 acres of prime land, Nima, Mamobi, Nigtam, will be given uh, meaning and beauty uh, as part of the present vision of inner city and Zongo development. We're told that uh, residents will be moved, high rise buildings uh, put up, and then they will be brought back in. Hello, Sam George. Um, the minister says, uh, really, he doesn't have a lot of information because uh, they are at the preparatory stage. But we are also being told that the project is expected to begin by the close of year. Government says it is one of the means to upgrade slums in cities, Accra beginning. Is the right direction? Well, let me say a very good morning to your good self, to Madame Rodalina, and to our viewers. It's interesting hearing some of these promises. Mm. Um, on paper, they, they look good. Um, the concepts look good. But I mean, on this platform, I've made the point that we have a president who basically is a soundbite, who's running a soundbite government. So you get to see and hear the very fantastic things that would happen. But actualization is a completely different thing. Um, yesterday, I listened to the minister himself, Honorable Samuel Atachia, um, on a different platform when he was asked even how much it will cost. And he said, I don't know, because the president was the one who announced this first. Now, you have a sector minister who is asked categorically, who is speaking to the media. This was after he had done a meet the press. He did a meet the press at right. the Ministry of Information. And is being asked about what's supposed to be a flagship program. He doesn't know the cost. We are told the program will roll out at the end of the year. <laughs> you want to roll out a program, you don't even know how much it's going to cost. Don't forget, we have a history of this government or this political ideology telling us to roll out programs without showing us the cost or telling us the cost, and we always see problems. You see the challenges the Free SHS has gone through. Remember when Nana Dedanko Akufado had his BBC interview, he was asked, how much will it cost? He couldn't tell. He said he will come and tell the Ghanaian people. He never told us till we are in the mess we are in today. Today we are being told that they are going to have villaggio style houses. <laughs> um, do they have an idea how much an apartment costs in villaggio? And is that supposed to mean that the current residents of Nima are going to be kicked out? So are we basically privatizing? Are we selling the residents of people who have lived in those areas for years? Would they be able to afford? 
the cost of villagio style houses. He said they were moving free. That's what the minister said. I, I heard him yesterday. Yeah. And, and, and he says that, you see, he, he, I can't take the minister seriously because he's not shown me any seriousness with his commentary post this flurry an, uh, announcement. Because you say you are going to construct houses. Are you constructing council flats? And you see, when you go to Europe, you've got what you call the council flats. You've got the, 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 the high-end apartments also. When you use Villaggio as an example, in Ghana, we have what you can call the council flats. The Adenta Snit flats, the Dantoman flats. Those are our own version of council flats. So you don't tell us you're building something along those lines, but you say you're building something like Villaggio, and you're giving this to private developers. Private developers will not build and allow you move in for free. That's a lie. I mean, let's call it a, let's call it a spade. And tomorrow, I don't want the minister to come back and tell us that he was only giving us hope. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, let's be realistic. There is no private developer in Ghana today who would develop apartments like Villaggio in Villaggio style and allow you to move in for free. It's not true. It's a lie. And look, the track so, record so of this government. Uh, I'm sorry, hold on. So uh, where he says that, uh, about the cost. He says that um, it, will, it is going to be a blend of technology and engineering works utilizing the 1,039 acre land. Therefore, the cost will be determined at the end of the day. It, does it answer your... It makes your no sense. I'm an engineer by, by profession. Mm. You don't start a project. And look, you can't start a project without knowing the cost of the project. That is the most irresponsible thing anybody will say. I told you, it's all flowery English. What he said there, a mix of engineering and technology, what's the meaning of that? What's the meaning of that? You must know how much... Everybody who is even going... If you're even going to build your own two-bedroom boys' quarters or bungalow, you know how much it will cost you. You have a fair idea how much it will cost you. The minister doesn't know how much the project will cost. When you don't know how much the project will cost, how then do you determine that it is going to be free? How then do you determine that government is even going to bear the cost of it? Look, don't forget this is a minister who came and told us in parliament. Yeah? He said this in parliament at the beginning of this year, that by the end of this year, the people of Nima will, for the first time in their lives, be able to use toilets that they can flush. This is what the same minister said in January of this year, January or February of this year in Parliament. So that is his thinking of the people of Nima. Don't forget this same government in November last year announced with pomp and pageantry a program to teach the people of Nima and other Zangos across the country how to prepare Wache and Sobulu. Ask yourself, that program that was launched, have you heard anything today? That program was under the auspices of the inner city and Zongo's ministry. Mm. Have you heard of any of the training programs that we were told will happen? Now we are being told again that this is in line with the president's vision to what? To renovate and, 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 and upgrade slums. Don't forget, the MPP has a track record. If you take the MPP's okay. manifesto, and I'll land here, the MPP's yeah, manifesto it. of 2000, they promised to turn Nima into high rises. They promised to make chop bars world-class restaurants. We saw what happened for eight years. Today, you have the president again come and tell you, the president's track record in Nima is the, the shops, the shop owners whose shops had been there for 25 years in front of his residence. That because he became president, he said they had become security risk to him. He cleared them. He's clearing out Nima again to bring in his bourgeois friends. That's exactly what this is going to be. I see. <laughs> Madam Ayana, so... He, upgrading slums isn't a bad idea at all. It's not. No, it's not. Upgrading, good morning, Ghana. Mm. Upgrading slums isn't a bad idea. But when you suddenly wake up one morning and some, someone says, I'm going to upgrade, but I don't know how much it's going to cost me, or I don't know where the money is going to come from, then you ask questions. Here we are with Sodom and Gomorrah, or old Fadama, right. for that Agbo matter. Agbogloshi. Upgrade. Look at that place, it's got economic value, looking at the landscaping and everything. But if you're running away from that and running away from the one, um, what, the hostels that you actually promised, Kayaye, which has not seen the light of day, and you're not telling us that you're going to build high rise or whatever in Nima, I want to ask, first and foremost, where are you going to settle the people before those high rises? Have you made available? Because um, if you're looking at the Singaporean uh, uh, idea, look when you built houses before moving them from the slums. He didn't just 
get up and say, let's go. No, he built the town and moved the people in there. Mm -hmm. So I would have loved to have heard him say that I have acquired this acreage of land here mm -hmm. and I am putting up these buildings. Those who would want to go, this is where you go, those who would want, because that is what happened when they were building the Nima Highway. People were given choices. You were either paid to leave or you were given a new place at Medina, which is Lahe. Mm -hmm. That was what happened before they got the chance to do the Nima Highway. So in the same vein, if you're, if you're telling me that you want to put up these houses, I want to know how. Are you going to put up houses somewhere, move them in, before putting up these other structures you're talking about, the village style um, houses? You see, I think that our president is beginning to be shy of his neighbors. And he's trying to get that scenario of a bourgeoisie area springing up from Nima. If he wants that, he must say so. Because I don't see how he's going to really get this thing done. Without building somewhere else for the indigents. Um, we're looking at Nima Mamobi. Yes, Nima Mamobi Newtown. That's the entry, thou, uh, two yeah, municipalities. Nima Mamobi Newtown. That's mm. not the only place that has slums. Sukura. There's Shukura there. Uh, town Council Line. So many other places. How about them? Why is he so fixated on Nima? Is it because of the fact that he feels that he needs the Muslims and he needs the, 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 the Zongo community and therefore you can just come out and spew all kinds of stories? I don't think these people are going to take him seriously. Because I, I have not, we've not had any meetings that have been held with the Zongo community. Else we would have heard that this mm -hmm. is what he intended to do. What we were told by the formation of the Zongo um, uh, ministry. ministry was for them to upgrade. Yes, upgrade means giving them better sewage services. You know, Nima deserves that, to have better sewage systems, better uh, road networks, better lightning. The housing will come. It might surprise him to know that some of the, the buildings inside Nima mm. are not as bad as you would find mm. in other the, urban, the urban areas. Buildings in Nima. Yes, in Nima. Three, four yes, and, and sometimes uh, somebody will say, "Don't mind the engine, you know, but don't mind the body, mind the engine, no, whatever." Body, yeah. Because you can see some of those houses and you think that they look like slums and things. You walk in there, you know. So when I even heard the honourable minister saying you know, the people were going to flash tell us, I said, "You don't know Nima," mm. and this has convinced me that they don't know Nima. And Nima is predominantly an Islamic community, mm. even though it's cosmopolitan sort of in, in, in look. And there are certain things that when you're going to do, you have to sit with the people themselves, the stakeholders, to find out what kind of structures, you know, whether you're going to have, uh, I just don't understand. Villaggio, I, I think that this thing has been around for a while. People have talked about Nima being a very nice area, low lying. Um, that would be fantastic to be used for um, these kinds of development projects. And this time round, he wants to move them so that his house will look in better or be set up in a, in a better vein. Um, I'm not convinced. I think this is just one of the promises that will not come to fusion. Okay. Let, let, let me just quickly add something to this. You see, we must, as a people, learn from other jurisdictions. I will not call Nima a slum because Nima in itself is not technically a slum. Like, because Nima has some of the fine plannings that you need. Of, of, of They have layouts, they've got water, they've got electricity. They've got, what we need to do is improve on the social infrastructure of Nima. Like you said, the drainage system. How, what are the drainage systems they're looking like? Mm -hmm. I mean, those are the things that we need to look at. You go to places like Brazil, and they have what they call the favelas. What the government has done with Brazil moving from a third world they have improved structure in the favelas. They've not cut the favelas out. Mm. They've not because you see, it's a part of who you are. People come to this country, and Nima is an is an is an experience for them. There's a certain way of life in Nima. Our president has prided himself as a Nima boy. Why does he want to change what Nima is known for? What you need to do is improve the social infrastructure there. Ensure that there are proper layouts there. Ensure that if people have built in, in areas that would affect 
for example, in the unfortunate event of a fire, mm. and the fire tender has to go in there, make sure that those layouts are clearly done. Make sure that water gets to every nook and cranny. It's extended from where it is now to every home in there. Ensure that you have proper drainage, that when it rains, Nima will not get flooded. There are storm drains. The president wants to build high rises there. He's been president for two and a half years. The president Mahama administration started the Nima storm drain that you see when you're on the Nima highway. It was, it was about 80% completed before he took over office. Since he took over office, he stopped the contractor. The contractor was stopped from working. They've not completed the Nima drain. You can't complete the Nima drain. And you say you want to come and build villagio houses. Okay. Let's go to the Guardian Times. Page 12 says that uh, the NCS action against Radio Code, uh, Radio XYZ, others is to muffle pro-opposition media. That's according to the Media Foundation for West Africa. Uh, it described the NCS shutting down some proposition uh, radio stations as arbitrary and capricious though the foundation is in support of attempts to enforce the law it was important to point out in all cases where states have sought to uh, repress sections of the media uh, in that statement the uh, media foundation condemned the authorities use of armed police to shut down uh, stations uh, radio good radio xyz and others on may 10 and said the use of armed police officers for conduct of exercise was typical of how authorities in repressive regimes would always seek to muffle pro-opposition media. The manner in which the radio stations were shut down could have been justified if the stations had been notified to shut down and had been recalcitrant in complying with such orders. That's the story in the Ghanaian time. Madam, how do we deal with this? Enforcing the law and ensuring that the media is operating uh, in a free environment? Um, it's okay to enforce the law. Mm. And I think that it's the right thing to do, enforcing the law. When, when you go out or you set out to do that, um, do it with a, a bit of a human face. I was not happy at the way that they shut down XYZ, not too far from my house. And I was asking myself, why? I was just watching um, this press conference of the NDC. And the next thing I knew, it was off. I was on one of your, you know, your stations, mm. I think it was Joy. And then I tried getting to my radio, and then someone sent me a message that XYZ is also off. And I said, why couldn't they just do it another day? Why couldn't they just wait? But you see, it all boils down to the fact that um, businesses or the media have taken things for granted for too long. I had listened to the Honorable Minority Leader, uh, Haruna Idrisu, trying to uh, impugn that at, their, at the time that they were in government, um, certain media houses did not have the requisite requirements or whatever, right. but they were allowed to continue. But that's wrong. It's against the law. Yeah, that is wrong. I mean, the fact of the matter is that if you're supposed to do um, certain things, you abide by those laws. So, but you should not also, as a body, a regulator, be selective. Because from what everybody else is, is thinking, you are being selective towards pro-NDC stations, which might not be what you, you, you actually you intend to do. You intended to do. But it just so happened that these were the ones that you went and shut down. And people are asking, give us a list of all the radio stations or all the media houses that have made up, you know, they've, um, paid for the alliances, they paid for whatever. Let's know how many other ones have been shut down apart from this, um, these stations belonging to the, purported to belong to NDC. Um, I think the Media Foundation has a point because there is no reason why in this era of democracy we should gag mm. any media house. And just by the fact that it is flouting a rule, yeah, just by a, a the fact that it's. You, you, you have to make, you see, um, freedom of speech is essential for any democracy. So you don't have to make laws and regulations and give out all manner of things that will strangulate them. Um, if, you're, if you are asking people to pay um, 10,000 a month or 10,000 per day for lack of paying um, uh, licenses, well, we do know that even to get advertisements, 
media works by advertisement. And some of these media houses are so small that they cannot even pay for those advertisements um, or even receive those advertisements. And then you're looking at um, the various, let's look at the various TV stations. I, I, I know of a TV station that has practically actually released all their workers. They're just on because a they can't pay them. They can't pay them. And, and, and it affected TV3 as well. You had to let go some people. Other media houses had to let go some people. So where is the freedom of speech? If, if you're gagging us by giving us such exorbitant uh, uh, fees to pay, that you know is going to be difficult for very small units to pay, then definitely what you're doing is actually using a back door to gag them. That's the way I see it. So maybe we should have um, the media houses categorized so that we know those that are really receiving good adverts, mm. those that are doing well, and those that are just there in, in a social setting to give information. But I think that um, the media, that's the Media, the media Foundation, Foundation for, for West, West Africa, Africa the GJA and the NMC and the NCA should all sit mm. and talk about this because we do not want a situation where you wake up and you don't have a choice of radio or media for that matter. Um, it's also necessary that we let media houses know that you're supposed to abide by the law, mm. regardless of whether you are pro-government or whatever. Because at the end of the day, this is a situation where your, your, your government cannot save you. Mm. You understand? So if you're in government, it doesn't mean you don't pay taxes. And that is what has been bothering this country. Businesses do not pay taxes when they, they are, you know, supposed parties are in power. It is wrong. You're supposed to be doing the right things. But there, there are rules and regulations governing this, this, mm. these, these things. And there are laws that ought to be obeyed. So I think that um, as a people, we should start what? Um, sticking to the law. Uh, and get people to obey them. Yes, and obeying the law. Okay. I'm grateful. Uh, and also, I'm George. I mean, this, the, the, the issue now is uh, obeying the law and, and making sure that uh, me, the media is working in a fair environment. The Media Foundation of West Africa is suggesting that what happened there uh, was arbitrary and capricious. You, you think so? Look, this whole issue is one that we may not even have the time to to, to delve into properly because there's several angles to it. First one has to do with the law in question that we suggest is is being flouted. That's the, the law is that, on line sensing. Absolutely. Is that law actually in conformity with our 1992 constitution? Article 1623 of the 1992 Constitution makes it explicitly clear that there shall be no requirement for a license for anybody to operate a media house in this country. Clear. But Parliament passes a law that then says that to operate a radio station, you must have a license. President Akufuado, in 1994, was lawyer for Radio I, Charles Riku Brobe, and Albert Kandapa, who were arrested by the Rawlings administration for running Radio I without authorization. His argument then, has it changed today? You then have the Electronic Communications Act, Act 775 of 2008 being passed. And you take section 13 of that act, and it talks, it talks they, they, they are careful in trying, Parliament at that time was careful, and the government at the time that brought the bill was careful to try and circumvent the constitution, and they don't call it license. They say it is frequency authorization. What is an authorization and what is a license? Now, they tell you that, and I agree, I've worked in the community of communication before, I understand what the NCA is saying, that you are operating via spectrum. Right. Spectrum is a finite national resource. Agreed. Even that technically today with digital technology is debatable. But let's even ag agree for the purposes of this discussion that spectrum is a finite national resource. Are you aware, and you should be because you run a, TV, a radio station, that all the radio stations do not just pay fee to the end frequency station fee, which these radio stations have been shut down for not, be, for not renewing, they are asked to renew them every five years. But every year, every year, you pay what is called a spectrum user fee. So if you are paying a yearly fee 
for the spectrum, for usage of the spectrum, which is a finite national resource. You have applied and you've been given a license or a frequency authorization. They call it frequency authorization in, mm. in, in, their, in the law. Right. If you've paid for that, why do you renew a frequency authorization when you pay the spectrum charge every year? Again, let's ask ourselves. You say some of the radio stations since 1997 or since 2000 or since 2002 have not renewed after five years their, their, their license of frequency authorization. But they have not renewed that. But in the sixth year after they have not renewed after five years, you took their spectrum user fee. At the end of the year. At the end of the year. And mm -hmm. every year when they come to pay, you collect it. Is that not the reliction of duty? And you see, let us be clear. Our laws may be fantastic, but many times our laws are not, especially in the IT space and technology space, technology is very dynamic. Mm. Our laws are not up to date. When you pass the law, the Electronic Communication Act in 2008, and you did the amendments again using because of the CST and all of that, you have not taken into cognizance the realities and practicalities of the media landscape today. Haruna made the case on news file, Honorable Haruna, and technically so, that if you want to use the law stricto, stricto sensu, <laughs> you would shut down almost every media house in this country. You know why? We have, we have a, a limitation on frequency broadcast. It's also in the law. Mm -hmm. That you must not broadcast, when you're, depending on your cla class, class A license Outside holder, your... you shouldn't go beyond 45 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Almost all of you including your media house. When you, when you drive outside Accra, outside the 45 kilometers, we listen. So should we say we are shutting you down? That's, you that's see, NCA's job to deal with. Too. No, but you see, the reality of the question is, you ask yourself, you thrive on advertisement. You are in an industry that is struggling because the market is saturated. And so if we restrict you to 45 kilometers, what do you then, when you are, your marketing team is going to sell, what is the catchment area you are selling to? How realistic is it for you to meet and, 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 and meet your overhead cost? So these are issues. Now the NCA's action is based on the Electronic Communication Tribunal's ruling. Mm. <laughs> Look, the ECT's ruling, and again, I am shocked at the media houses. They've taken this for granted. The media houses should have challenged the ECT's ruling. The ECT aired, the tribunal aired in its ruling. The tribunal's ruling was that, and I have the ruling here, by respectable people. I mean, my board chair when I was at the National IT Agency uh, uh, board, Dr. Professor, Professor Kwenu, he's somebody I have a lot of technical respect for. Justice that, that Teba, fantastic lawyer. Who sat in the tribunal? Absolutely. But the tribunal aired, because the tribunal's ruling that you cannot renew a license after it has expired. It's flawed in so common you logic. You have to apply for a new one. It's, 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 it's flawed in common logic. Can you go and re I'm coming. Can you re go to the passport office today without your passport expiring and say you want to renew a passport? Or without your driver's license expiring, can you go and say you are renewing? You don't renew something that is still valid. You renew something that has expired. Okay. And so the argument that because the licenses or the frequency authorizations had expired and the media houses had not renewed them before expiry. The media houses have no right to then put in a renewal request, but they must asking now for the same frequency. Asking, but they must now apply as new agencies if flouts common logic. So, so, so this is a conversation that must be uh, uh, done on, uh, in a broader context. Absolutely not because these two stations and others. Are I, I mean, these two stations. So we must, this, we must the, the, this, this conversation. We, we must have a national discussion on this. What is in the yes. constitution? However, what is in the, NCA the modus law? operandi mm. and the way the shutdowns were done is what has brought in the political twist. Okay. That you see, you pick these two media houses, and look, I can give you. I've pulled off the own the NCA. This is not my own document. If you go to the NCA's website, there are forty-eight functional radio stations in Accra. As we speak, based on the NCA's own documentation, out of the 48 radio stations, only 11 have renewed and have met the criteria that they are setting in for Accra. the... In Accra. In Accra, alone. NCA says and, that and, in and so the question Accra, you should ask yourself. two. It said Radio Good and X-Men. It's not true. This is on well, their website. From their website. You can go. Atlantis FM. They got their first date of authorization on the 13th of December 1995. They've not renewed it. it as per their own, their own Radio Gold, 7th of, of September 1995, not renewed. Life FM, they got it on the 17th of, of September 1995. They renewed for the first time, or their last date of renewal was 1st of April 2015. So all of this is there. Kasapa okay. FM has not renewed. As we speak, Radio Adan has not renewed. Sunny FM has not renewed. Radio France International just renewed. The BBC, 
has not renewed its frequency. As per the, the documents there, these are okay. all Could documentation that the is, is, of is, the, is exactly is it website. is from their website. Okay. They have not done it. Even three FM, three FM. They said you got your license on the twenty fifth of February zero uh, two thousand and two, and as far as that document shows, you've not renewed your authorization. All of these media houses are still functional. Why do you then send armed men? And who says that you need armed men okay, to go and shut down a radio station? In the uh, middle uh, uh, of the kind of work a, that was done. It's a normal operation. Not Anytime true. they go in to do that, That's they not have true. armed men there. I mean, I, like I said, I've worked, at the, I've worked at the Ministry of Communications before. This is not true. Okay. We, have, we have actually not seen instances where we've actually gone to shut down a radio station. There were times when the NDC was in power. And there were issues with Oman FM. There were issues with Daily Guide. We didn't go and shut them down. I'm grateful. And even the, and, and last one, last one. When you take the NCA's Act, the Electronic Communication Act, Act 775, that sets them up, the NCA has broken the law. Because the Act states clearly that when you want to revoke a station's license, you must write to them officially and give them a 30 day notice. You must then offer them the opportunity to come and remedy that breach. You must hear their side of the story. Mm. The NCA wrote to the media houses and the next day went ahead to do this. They broke, they broke their own. Act. Okay, let's see how the lawyers of the stations will take it. But, uh, I mean, I can read the foundation. relevant portions of the, of the uh, ECA to you on, on, on how to revoke a uh, license. It is to muffle pro opposition media. Let me introduce my third guest. Richard Santiago is a member of the NPP. Richard, good morning. The late and Richard Santiago. Uh, you are good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I think originally, I was in schedule for okay. this. You program. had to. And in. so we need to come in to okay. sort of salvage the situation we're because grateful. there was a hitch up. We're grateful you've joined us. To come. We're grateful you've And I've been listening to my, yes, my brother exactly. with some of his the, false claims. Yes, the, the and media all foundation kinds of is suggesting that what happened uh, is just to muffle or stop proposition media from operating. I, I think it, it saddens my heart that uh, we have civil society organizations that have in recent times started preaching lawlessness in this country. I cannot understand that. And I think a good number of Ghanaians cannot appreciate and understand the sort of stance that have been taken by some of these uh, civil society organizations. We ought not to do that. What are the laws for? The laws are supposed to regulate us in terms of the way we conduct ourselves right. and run businesses and conduct our activities. Bear in mind, these radio entities are business entities. They are supposed to be profit-making institutions. They make money for their owners. These, for instance, let me uh, uh, settle on uh, Radio Gold and uh, uh, this uh, XYZ, because right. they have become a topical issue now. We know that Radio Gold got its license as far back as uh, uh, 1995, thereabout. From that era to 2000, they have not, they, there were several opportunities for them to renew their license. They mm -hmm. never took that opportunity. Countless number of letters were written to these institutions particularly Radio Good, because they have been in the system for quite a long time. And they paid their fears to that. My brother, 2000, a letter was written to uh, Radio Good, Network Broadcast, as it's registered, to renew their licenses. They failed to do so. Fast forward, 29th September, similar letter was written by NCA to to renew their authorization, they failed to do that. And they granted them 30 days period for them to put together from, their... From when, 95? I'm talking about, I'm giving you the sequence of events. Okay. It, it came into being 3rd October, 1995. In uh, uh, 2nd October, 2000, a letter was written to them to renew the authorization. They failed to take advantage of that. September uh, 29th, 2008, similar letter was sent to Radio Gold to renew the alliances. An additional 30 days was given to them to put together their documentation. They failed to take advantage of that. 28th October, 2008, letter was sent to them. They failed to take similar advantage of that opposition too. Even when President Mills was in power, August 25th, 2009, that was an NDC. Remember, the focus of Radio Gold and its activities have been to promote the NDC and, 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 and the activities of anything that NDC is for. Even when President Mills was in power, when the country was being run by the NDC, they wrote letters to them. That was 25th of August, 2009, asking them to renew the authorization. They failed to take advantage because they thought that we are living in a jungle. So they decided not to take advantage of that. September 25th, 2009, another letter was sent. 
they did not take advantage of it. 29th, they reminded them again. It moves on to June 2016. Letter was sent to them. President Mahama was in power. Asking them to renew the authorization. Because the point is that it's the finest national resources. You are using it for businesses. The other uh, government is supposed to benefit, or the country is supposed no. to benefit. Obviously, the contribution you make will be used for other purposes. They failed to do that. 23rd June 2017, letter was sent to them. And subsequently, NCA decided to take actions and decided to ask them to pay some penalty. You remember, people were crying about the fines. And they went to court under the umbrella body, Giba. And the ruling of the court came in. And the ruling suggests that, one, these institutions are not existing per the laws because they failed to renew their license and per, that, per the laws, they do not exist. So you cannot ask something that do not exist to pay any fine. So they are not going to pay, they are not supposed to pay those fines that were heaped on them. So that one they celebrated. Then uh, because of the ruling of the court, it meant that the court suggested that if they want to operate, they need to go back to NCA and take further authorization before they cannot uh, operate. In this part of the uh, uh, judgment, here the NDC is crying wolf. So you cannot reprobate and approbate at the same time. When it comes to these matters, you ought to take the judgment of the court, hook, line, sinker, and apply same. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to a uh, radio station, we are saying that, oh, we need to allow them to do whatever they want. My brother, as we speak, the station that are suffering these consequences is not only uh, 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 Radio Gold and SYZ. There are other stations in other regions that are suffering similar fate. How many do you know? At the moment, I know about 15 of them. They have all been shut down. Yes. They are not in operation. Some of them are aligned to the MPP. Some of them, they are private business owners. Some of them, some religious institutions that have established them. So when you come in and you are given opportunity to explain matters to people, a lawmaker, take your time. Because indeed, you no, people make I'm the laws. I'm not going to let no, you go down. No, you people I mean, make the laws. You, you, so you, we expect that. You, you, you are quite right. ignorant uh, about uh, this. Uh, please, uh, please, 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 please. Don't come and tell me as a lawmaker. You see the arrogance you talk about. I'll come to you. You see the arrogance you talk about. You see the arrogance you talk about. I think you can make your point without... But when you hit him in, when the man was speaking, no, no, right, right, right. I take a to this one. Right, right, right. It's a fact. Right, 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 right. I Richard, please, I am in charge of the program. This conduct here. Down. When you are speaking, that, I sat here and your time. And I allow him to lie. I allow him to do all kinds okay, of things. Please, please, Richard. He sat here, you mean, please. when I was coming, monitoring oh, the platform. Richard, please calm down. Really trying to be insult and insinuation the president of the insult of the land. What was the insult? My brother, when he was speaking, I never came. I said, what was the insult? When he got to the, this uh, 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 the Nima issue and the president and the government trying to redevelop the place and not uh, 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 sucking the people from the area, making sure we build for the people to stay in there so they can have a decent accommodation. The kind of description he painted. Is that insult? The kind of description a, a, and the thing that he said. View? Do you understand that? Richard, it's right, 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 Johnny, let's right, take some right, comment. Right, 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 Richard, I, I'm right, in charge right, of the no, program. No, but Please allow me to right, come right, right, It's a good money once again. Let me go to Johnny. I'll come back to you. Richard, I said I'll come back to you. Please calm down. Don't mess up the program, please. Johnny, let's take some Let's take some comments. I'll come back to you. We'll take some comments. Sam George, thank you. OK. So, so we'll start off. F, 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 F. Johnny, please Your microphones are off, so nobody can hear you. Well, we'll start off uh, well, a chronology of what Tilapia has been telling us. The Tiwa Savage report, where the CID boss told us that she knows where the girls are, and the parents were excited about it. Then, subsequently, she came, and then it was Pilolo, so she, she couldn't tell where the girls are, and says, we know where the girls are. Then you can tell that she's going down the, the wall. And then a key question comes up, asking Tiwa Savage, so when? And at this point, the parents are worried. It says, Madam, our girls are still not back as promised. And then a final one that says, uh, it's not Tiwa Savage anymore, it's Tiwa Salvage, the motivational speaker. And it says that the police motivators presents uh, hope to rescue. And uh, hope to rescue Ahua, we know where the girls are, is to give you hope. But it's almost 40 days after that declaration was made and the girls have still not been found. Good morning. Good morning, Johnny.
John from our boss says, once upon a time when a camel was jumping and playing around a king's daughter and a male sheep stood unconcerned. Accidentally, the camel stepped uh, and killed the child. Now, Ram must slaughter, be slaughtered for the burial. This is who uh, is behaving unconcerned in what MPP and Anna are doing. Uh, now, should know that they will surely benefit from the outcome. Do you know that close, uh, closure of two radio stations, uh, again, believed to be an affiliate of NDC, aside XYZ and Gold at Angloga, that's uh, Hugba and uh, Dabala, where we're really in crisis, that's what you're saying. From correct score, Zakaria in Sunyani says, the clueless and incompetent Akufuado government has failed Ghanaians. Insecurity and corruption everywhere. Incompetent CID boss cannot run away from her tape to cover up the corrupt appointees. NIA malpra uh, malpractice, no intimidation can stop the NDC from a sense of critique of this incompetent, impotent Akufuado government. Shame, shame, shame. 2020 is around the corner, you say. TV3 helpers, the people of Jirapa Zongo community have been living in darkness for the past one and a half of uh, two weeks uh, just because of the faulty transmitter which has uh, ever happened in 2018 as I sent you this information this morning I uh, did that blindly because I cannot watch your program so I'm sorry about that I'm sure ECG will come to your uh, PDS will come to your images and Mohammed in Tamale says, Good morning, Bright and Johnny. Me, my mom will be world class residential area. I refuse with all my strength to get excited over just uh, because uh, another slogan has been announced. Babamu in Tamale says, In fact, I'm disappointed in Honorable Sam George's tangent of analysis of the issue. So, Honorable Sam George is trying to say that the Nima community doesn't deserve better or what. Anyway, this government is committed to make Ghana an uh, interesting and lovely place. Moreover, President Kufado is able to deliver 80% of his promises. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Bright and Etat TV3. I hear uh, from politicians saying, uh, I will do this, I'll do that for Zongos. I weep. Who says Zongos are poor? Anyway, Zongos made ourselves useless, letting the politicians get uh, take us for a ride. We like businesses than going to school. In, in fact, the reason is which which is why uh, we look like we're poor but let's show politicians that we're capable of transforming our lives a condo in Kumasi Walanyo Anakwitia says my brother what's the heck uh, is some judge uh, well, I can't get it now some judge if the minister says he is going to build an ultra modern housing facility for our brothers and sisters in the Zongo communities is he demonstrating skin pain uh, gesture here or what Zongo communities deserve even more than that if your previous NDC government ignored the plights and now things are changing for them this one too you are opposing you are an engineer so what okay uh, the intolerance of the this government is reflecting in the action of state institutions MPP can use NCA to close down radio stations affiliated to the NDC. Still, NDC will win 2020 hands down. Osman Brookison. Ronaldo should stop flattering us with his lies about making Mamobi and Nima world class residential areas because the Mamobi Nima gardens have still not been completed. And you are promising us the upgrading of the slums. What happened to the Zongo youth that were trained on how to cook and make Sobolo? What is the faith of such uh, an initiative? Akufuado should stop telling us lies. And finally, good morning, TV3. I live at Nima, God have mercy this gov on this government. Uh, are they serious or just a uh, drama? MPP and the government should go away. We don't want, uh, we don't hear them. Uh, they are doing nothing since, uh, they've done nothing since they came to power. Lies, lies, lies. They are only looking for money in Ghana. Mutala Majo and uh, Alaji Hamza and Pigbam says, for God, can someone tell the CID boss to stop talking and produce the three missing girls? This was someone who told the whole world that they have the girls in their custody and they will be sent their, to their various families very soon. The same woman later in an interview said that uh, she simply was giving hope to the parents of the missing girls. The CID boss should stop playing with her emotions. I don't think she is fit for the post. She must be sacked. Oh, she must resign herself, right? I thank you very much. Okay, Johnny, we're grateful for your comment. Keep them coming. We will uh, be getting to read them. But unfortunately, we have to wrap up the conversation. We're hitting the top of the hour. And uh, we Do couldn't have uh, talked uh, about well, Johnny, if you dollarization. Me, uh, sorry, I said, Johnny, right. If you could give me 30 seconds. I just want to read the ruling of the, of of the tribunal. Yes. Uh, uh, the the uh, ruling of the tribunal uh, says, right. accordingly, right. I'm, I'm grounds B, C, and D uh, 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 by this means. I'm, 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 because the point I, I'm, I'm reading. He, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to I'm just reading. He came in to interrupt Accordingly, grounds B, C, and D are hereby dismissed. For the reasons given in the tribunal's discussion of ground A, on the principle of fairness, the appeal is... I was making my submission. The appeal is allowed on ground A. In respect 
Let's go. 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 Let's and the penalties imposed on all the upper lands, with the exception of Network Broadcasting Company, which is Radio Gold, are hereby quashed. That's the fines that were imposed. Mm. The appeal of Network Broadcasting Company is allowed on the ground of procedural impropriety, and therefore the penalty is also quashed. Now, on the, the pro procedural impropriety they speak about here was introduced by the tribunal. It wasn't a defense by any of the upper lands. And in the concluding paragraph, this is what it says. The issue is to be determined... The issue to be determined is whether Network Broadcasting Company, on the facts as narrated underground A above, was given an adequate opportunity to respond to the decision of the respondents, the NCA, to charge it with the offense of failure to apply for renewal of his authorization before its expiry. The evidence on this is rather scanty. However, the tribunal is not satisfied that the company, that's Radio Gold, was given an adequate opportunity. Best practice will be for the respondent, NCA, to invite a prospective subject of a penalty to show cause why it should not be penalized for a particular offense. For the tribunal to uphold the penalty imposed on the company in this case, there has to be evidence on record showing that the company was given an opportunity to respond to the offense charge before the levying of the penalty. Okay. There is inadequate evidence on this. Accordingly, the penalty imposed on Network Broadcasting Company Limited so is also is, this, this is this the is the tribunal. But this is the penalty, right? Okay. Let, let me do right. something. And say the things no, you don't know right, about. Right, you know, right, 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 that would make people feel that we are being gagged as a, as a, a country and that the um, culture of silence is coming back into our fold. Um, I also would want to say that at the end of it all, we all hope that um, we could get good places for our, our indigents and our um, citizens, that's NEMA, um, but we should be realistic when we are making promises. Um, for a government that has come and we've not seen any housing project that it has done, and to come up and suddenly just say they're going to give um, some kind of villacho style housing to Nima makes me feel like you're just taking the people for a ride. So I think that the president should come again. Probably it's something that he's dreaming of, but it's not going to be um, a reality in his first term. Grateful. Richard, now you can wrap up. I think, right, let me read this first one. So the court heard that. The need to obtain authorization before operating a radio station was reasonably required for the protection of national security, public order, public morality, and the reputation and the rights of freedom of others within the meaning of the article. The article 164. Mm. I said, let the NDC understand that the frequencies that have been given to radio stations that are affiliated to their membership and all that is not inheritance bequeathed to them by their ancestors. That is where there are laws that ought to be followed. So those who have just acquired several of them and they refuse to do their, they do the need for by paying what is due the state and the nation, right, they need to know that. No, the second one, the second one, the second one, the second one says, I allowed him. Why is that? You allow him and wrap it up. Second one, second one. You allow him, allow him. The second one, the second point. I allowed you. What kind of what kind of behavior is that? You're being unruly this morning. Samja, you you allow. You pay. You're being unruly this morning. So stop that. Richard, go on. Right, the second point. I mean, what is you wrong if government decides to put up housing to help the good people of Nima and Mamogi? What is wrong with that? Well, they, they did not say it is wrong. I mean, what, what who says that the government that? has not put up any housing infrastructure since this government has been offered? Say you Where? are not aware. Where? Say, Where? say, no, no, Where? Just, please, please. I allowed you. See, you see, that's your problem. That's your problem. That's your problem. I don't answer to you. I hope you're getting it. Oh. So the mere fact that you are not aware do not guarantee you to make. I mean, where? the point is that no, 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 do not allow where? you to make those comments. Secondly, no, second, no, second, no, respect no, your view. Second, second, second. Allow him. 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 Allow we decided to complete all of them. So you have to complete them. But, 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 but you see, that where? What, no, wait, 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 where? okay. Wait. 
Beyond that, beyond that, Richard, I'm grateful. No, no, you are not aware. You are not aware. I am grateful. We are not aware. If you tell, if you tell us which one, I am grateful. Richard is standing here. I am a member of the MPP. Sam George is helping for the program. Stop. Madam Rodayana is a member of the CPP. Gentlemen and lady, I am grateful for your Wednesday morning. Thanks so much for joining us.